So you got yourself an Ioneo 2 or an Ioneo Geek. And you're like, man, I love this thing. It has all the power that I need. I can play just about any game that I like. And as great as this machine is, there's really one big problem that I have with the Ioneo. And that's the software. The software just isn't that great, especially when you compare it to other handhelds like the Steam Deck. With its software, it just doesn't even come close. First off, the Ioneo is a Windows-based device. It runs Windows 11, which isn't a bad thing. It does give you the ability to play any game. Unlike SteamOS, you can't play every single game in your library on SteamOS, but Windows you can. However, the biggest drawback of Windows is that it's bloated. So we have to end up de-bloating the operating system to get it to perform more efficiently. And while you can do a lot of the same things in Windows that you can do in SteamOS, such as control the TDP, cap your frame rate, and so on, it's just not as seamless as SteamOS. Another gripe that I have as well as other people have also mentioned this is that the sleep feature doesn't work quite as well on the Ioneo when you have Windows installed. And what I mean is that you can actually press the power button to put the device to sleep, but what you'll notice is that sometimes, even though the screen will turn off, the machine will stay running, which is really inconvenient when you're at work and you're just trying to get in a quick gaming session, maybe 15 minute break, you're getting in a quick gaming session and you just wanna go ahead and put the device to sleep and get back to work and the machine isn't turning off. But what if I told you that you could actually enjoy this device without all of those headaches, that you could have all of the features and perks that are built into SteamOS right at your fingertips on the Ioneo. I'm here to tell you that this is indeed possible thanks to Chimera OS. So what exactly is Chimera OS? In a nutshell, it is SteamOS modified to work on other machines. And they just recently added support for Ioneo devices. So we can have this exact same experience on the Ioneo. Full controller support, all of the same perks that you have on the Steam Deck. And today we're gonna show you how to set this up on the Ioneo with full TDP control, the works. If you guys enjoy this video, please be sure to drop a like and also consider subscribing so that you don't miss out on future videos like this. We cover tips, tricks, and gameplay performance on the Steam Deck as well as the Ryzen 7 6800U powered devices like the Ioneo 2 and Geek. You definitely don't wanna miss out on any of it. All right, so let's go over what you're gonna need. First, you're gonna need a USB thumb drive or an SD card. You're also gonna need a USB hub and you're also gonna need a keyboard. And the first thing we're gonna do is go to any PC, make sure you have your SD card or your thumb drive inserted, and we're gonna download Chimera OS. Next, we're gonna download Belena Etcher. This is the software that we're gonna use to create our ISO image. You can also use Rufus for this as well. And once we have everything downloaded, we'll go ahead and install Belena Etcher. Again, if you prefer to use Rufus for this, feel free to use that. They both pretty much do the same thing. But on this one, we're gonna be trying it out with Belina Etcher. And once we have Belina Etcher up and running, we're gonna to go to Flash from File. We're gonna find our Chimera OS image, and then we're gonna select Target. And we're using a 64 gigabyte thumbstick. We're gonna go ahead and select that, and then click on Select One. And then on the next screen, we're going to click where it says Flash. All right, and so now Belina Etcher is creating our bootable ISO. And once it's done, we're going to take our thumb drive or SD card and head on over to the Ioneo. And with our thumb drive or SD card inserted, we'll press the power button and then we'll hold down the LC plus volume up to enter into the boot menu. And then we're gonna scroll down in the list to our thumb drive. Now here on the next screen, we're gonna select to install Chimera OS. And then once we hit enter on our keyboard, you're gonna see a bunch of information pile up on the screen. Don't worry, it's just doing its thing. And then here on the next screen, it's gonna ask us to connect to the internet so that way it can download the system image. So we'll go ahead and hit enter on configure. And then on the next screen, we'll go ahead and connect to our Wi-Fi. And once we're connected on the next screen, it's gonna ask us where we want to install. We're gonna choose our NVMe SSD, which is our internal storage but you can also install this to an external SSD or an SD card, whatever you want. So let's say you don't wanna get rid of Windows. Let's say you wanna dual boot, you wanna have 
Chimera OS installed on an SD card or on an external SSD, you do have that option, which I think is really cool. All right, and once everything is done downloading, we're gonna reboot. And the rest of this process is exactly the same as it would be if you were installing Steam OS. The installation process of Chimera OS is very fast. It's smooth and easy. I love it so far. And I didn't run into any issues getting this installed on my Ionia. And it looks like we're just about done here. We're just entering in our credentials, setting up our Wi-Fi, and basically we're finished. Well, almost finished. We'll, we'll show you what else we have to do here soon. All right, so here we are. We have Steam OS running on the INEO Geek. We have full control support. Everything is working. And here if we press this button, we have quick settings menu on our right side of the screen. And if we press this other button, we have the menu on the left side of the screen, just like on the Steam Deck. And if we scroll down to our performance menu here, we have our overlay options and we can expand this. You see other options as well. And if we scroll down even further, you can see we have a scaling mode here and we have our scaling filter with FSR, just like on Steam OS. However, if we scroll back up here to where it shows our thermal TDP limit, what you'll notice is that it limits our TDP to 15 Watts, which means that it's not going to give us the full power that we need in order to really be able to push the Ionio to play games at higher performance. So we're going to show you how to go ahead and increase that wattage up all the way up to 28 Watts. And to do that, we're going to need to go into desktop mode. And once we're in desktop mode, the first thing I'm going to do is download Google Chrome. We're just going to head into the app store, type in Chrome. And then once it pops up in our list here, we just click on it and then install it. And then once we have Chrome installed, we're going to head on over to GitHub and we're going to download Becky, which is a plugin handler that allows you to install plugins on the Steam Deck and in Steam OS. We're going to use Decky to install a plugin called Power Control, which will allow us to increase the TDP on the Ionio beyond 15 watts. And to install it, all we need to do is copy and paste this command line argument into our console and press enter. And then when it prompts you for a password, the default password is gamer, all lowercase. And once we're done installing Decky, we're going to head back on over to GitHub and we're going to download power control. Now, when you come to this GitHub page, it's going to be in a Chinese language. So we're just going to convert it to English so that way we can read the instructions here. And we will be downloading the most recent release, which is version 2.0. We will provide the links for this and for Decky in the description so you don't have to go around looking for it. Now, once we have Power Control downloaded, we're gonna open it up with files. And what we want to do is extract it to the Decky plugins folder. Now, what you'll notice is that when you try to extract Power Control to the Decky plugins folder, it won't allow you, it's gonna give you an error message because there are permissions that need to be changed on the plugins folder. So this is how we do it. We just go to home, homebrew, then to plugins, and then we right click on the folder, scroll down to properties, and then click on permissions. And I just changed all of these to create and delete files. So this, this gives us the permission to delete files from this folder or place files in this folder. Now we can go back to power control and extract it back into the plugins folder, and it should go through fine this time. And we can verify this. We can go right back to the plugins folder and we should see the power control folder located right there. All right. All right. So now we're done. We can go ahead and close out of all of this and we can head back to gaming mode and we should be able to increase our TDP beyond 15 Watts. If we open up our quick settings and then scroll all the way down to the bottom here, we will see the power control plugin and here, we have our TDP thermal limiter and we can increase it all the way up to 40. All right, so let's go ahead and take a look at a few games running on the INEO in Steam OS or Chimera OS. And first on our list is Dead Space Remake. Now this game here, we are playing it with a 60 FPS cap and we're using around 22 to 24 watts TDP and gameplay is very smooth. 
hovering around 60 FPS for most of the gameplay. And next up, we're going to take a look at one of my favorite racing games, which is Forza Horizon 5. Here we're using the same I mean, roughly 22 watts TDP limiter. And as you can see, even though we have it set to around 22 watts TDP, it doesn't actually lock in at the 22 watts TDP. It does allow it to drop down, which I think could be good for battery life. And I felt like this video would not be complete without taking a look at one of the most intense fight scenes in God of War, which is the Baldur boss fight at the beginning of the game, because there's a lot of particle effects here, a lot of activity, a lot of action going on. And here you can see we are maintaining a FPS of around 60 here uh, with a 22 to 24 watt usage. All right, guys, so there it is, how to convert your Neo into a Steam Deck Pro with Chimera OS. I'm gonna be playing with this for a while. I'm not sure if I'm even going to reinstall Windows on my Neo. we'll see, but definitely I am impressed by this new setup here. And uh, if anything, I may try to set up a dual boot so that way I can still have Windows and play other games that aren't able to be played on Steam OS. But yeah, this is amazing. If you guys enjoyed this video, please leave a like and also consider subscribing so you don't miss out on future videos like this. We cover tips, tricks, gameplay performance for the Steam Deck as well as the Aya Neo. Don't wanna miss out on any of it. And yes, we will be getting that ROG ally when it drops as well. All right, guys, we will see you in the next one. We're out of here. Peace.